Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. All right. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good right. morning, sir. Good morning, morning. Okay. Today, uh, we will be discussing the descending tracks, or what we call as the motor tracks. Okay. And um, if you look at the motor tracks, we had discussed sensory tracks, and now I know by this time you're, you know, uh, well aware what a tract is, isn't it? It consists of neurons, isn't it? That synapse and forms a kind of a pathway, isn't it? For sensory, it starts from the first order neuron containing the receptor at the terminal end and ends with the fourth order neurons. But uh, today we're going to discuss these descending motor pathways or motor tracks. And uh, as I've already highlighted in the earlier classes, you'll find that motor tracks are basically made up of two neurons, okay? It is a synapse of two, rather it's kind of a, kind of a uh, bisynapse, all right? Or disynapse of, you know, basically two neurons or three, three neurons if there is an interneurons in between. So it consists of basically the upper motor neuron and the lower motor neuron, okay? So you, as you can see here, uh, this diagram, we have these two types of descending motor pathways. One with the first order neuron originating from the cortex itself, isn't it? The motor cortex. And the other set of uh, motor pathways are, you know, where first order neuron originate from the subcortical structures. Okay. Not from the motor cortex, but the subcortical structures. It may be uh, the reticular formation. It may be the red nucleus may be the you know, vestibular nucleus or the tectum. Okay, so depending on from where it arises, okay, it will be named as such. Okay, so these pathways that you see on the left, right, which are called as pyramidal pathways originating from the motor cortex, okay, are basically two types. One is lateral, they are called as corticospinal tracts, okay. One is the lateral corticospinal tract and the other is the yeah, anterior corticospinal tract. Of course, you have another tract which uh, does not go all the way to the spinal cord, all right, or uh, synapse in the spinal cord, but then it uh, becomes a cranial nerve, all right, originate from the motor cortex, then uh, somewhere in the subcortical level, it, uh, you know, it uh, synapse with a cranial nuclei and then you know, becomes a cranial nerve that supplies the head portion of the, you know, the head portion of the body, supplies the face, supplies the, you know, the tongue, and uh, is responsible for uh, functions like swallowing and all that. Anyway, we'll come to that again. And uh, for the moment, uh, you must know that uh, broadly, you know, the motor pathways are, are of two types. One, pathways originating from the motor cortex. Two, pathways originating from the subcortical structures. These pathways originating from the motor cortex are called as the pyramidal tracts. And these pathways originating from the subcortical structures are called as the extra pyramidal tracts. Okay. Is it clear? So broadly, we have two types of tracks. Okay. In this case, example is given. Here is for the pyramidal, it is a lateral corticospinal tract, and for the extra pyramidal, it's the rubrospinal tract. Taking origin in the case of rubrospinal tract, you can see clearly here is taking origin from the red nucleus. Okay. So we'll come back to extra pyramidal uh, tracks in detail uh, when we discuss it. Today, I'm going to focus on this part. That means the pyramidal tracks alone, okay? So, but then the general features of, you know, all the tracks, be it pyramidal or experimental pyramidals, is that, you know, the tracks are made up of upper motor neurons and lower motor neurons, here as well as here. Am I clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So, this is only to show you that, you know, the tracks are, the pyramidal tracks are tracks originating from the motor cortex, okay, the precentral gyrus, 
and then descends into the internal capsule here, the internal capsule, and then in the medulla it forms a kind of pyramid. Okay, there is an elevation here of the tracks. Okay, tracks become elevated, and uh, you know forms a kind of a pyramidal structure. Okay, so there is something called as pyramidal decussation as it crosses like this, and then descends. Okay, as a lateral cortical, cortical spinal tract. So some, you know, some of the tracks that cross. That means the majority of the, you know, uh, this tract that crosses forms the lateral corticospinal tract. 80% of the fibers forms this. And then uh, you have 20% uh, of the fibers that don't cross. But anyway, because what my, my intention of showing this, uh, you know, slide is that uh, why uh, these tracts are called as pyramidal tracts is because of this, all right, the formation of this elevation in the medulla okay and um, uh, that you know that uh, looks like a, a pyramidal structure okay so for that reason you know these tracks are called as the pyramidal tracks okay so these two these are two broad uh, division of the motor tracks and uh, you can see the difference okay these are the uh, you know the names of the tracts, the pyramidal tracts, lateral, the anterior or ventral, and the cortico bulbar or the cortico nuclear tract. Okay, and then the, you have the extra extrapyramidal as cerebrospinal, vestibulospinal, reticulospinal, tetraspinal. Okay, the origin is from the precentral gyrus. Here, the origin from the brainstem nuclei or subcortical structures. They have no direct control of the motor cortex. They are descend directly from the cerebral cortex to the spinal cord. As I've said, 80% would cross in the medulla, forming a kind of a pyramid. 20% are not crossed. Okay, they will cross only when at the terminal point in the spinal cord. Okay. Yeah, all the tracks in the case of extrapyramidal tracks, uh, all of them cross except vestibulospinal. Track. So the function, pyramidal tracks concerns with fine movement and of course the anterior for the that is for the lateral corticospinal tract and the you know anterior spinal uh, corticospinal tract is concerned with postural movement. Here the function of extrapyramidal tracts is basically body posture and equilibrium. Okay, and uh, to some extent involuntary movements of muscles. I think I won't, uh, you know, be dwelling on this uh, differences of these. Rather, uh, you know, we'll come back to these when we, you know, when we have uh, completed the discussion of uh, both the tracks. So I, I'm going to skip this part. Okay. And I'm going to skip this also. Now I'm going to, be, you know, go to the pyramidal tracks. All right. And um, as we have already seen in the previous slides. They take origin from the precentral gyrus, the so motor cortex. Okay, and uh, some from the sensory, you know, cortex as well, from the posterior parietal cortex, which is uh, dominantly sensory. Okay, and there is one more point that I want to tell you. What this slipped my mind? Now slipped through my mind. Anyway, so what happens here is that uh, we have this pyramidal tract. Fibers originating, the first or rather the lower, the upper motor neuron originating in the precentral gyrus, the motor cortex, all right. And uh, you will find that, uh, you know, these fibers take origin from different parts of the, you know, precentral gyrus. Some are taking origin from the 30%, uh, I would say, anyway, uh, around around 3% to 5% of the fibers, you know, which are large fibers, they take origin from what we call as a bed cell, which are present in the fifth layer of the precentral gyrus, okay. So these bed cells were uh, also known as pyramidal cells. So uh, sometimes there is confusion with regards to the nomenclature of these tracts. They, they you know, often think that, you know, they are called pyramidal because some of the fibers are originating from the 
of the pyramidal cells or the bed cells in the layer 5 of the cortex. But that is not the case, as I've already said. Why they are called pyramidal is because they decussate and form a kind of an elevation in the medulla, a pyramidal elevation in the medulla. So that's why they're called as the pyramidal plants. So anyway, 3% takes origin from this, uh, from the dead cells, 3 to 5%, uh, and then the, around 95% um, takes, uh, takes origin from other places of the, you know, placental gyrus. 30% uh, um, a little bit more will be taking origin from the premotor cortex. Okay. And then uh, 30, another 30% 30 will be taking origin from the primary motor cortex. And as I've said uh, earlier, that 40% uh, of the fibers would originate from the posterior parietal cortex, which is dominantly sensory. So probably, you know, it plays an important role in coordinating, you know, sensory motor uh, sensory motor uh, you know interaction or uh, some kind of information that is required for motor action sensory information that is required for motor action okay so it's kind of um, probably helps in the you know uh, sense sensory motor interaction anyway these are you know i mean uh, therefore you know, fibers are taking origin from different different uh, uh, parts of the motor cortex as well as sensory cortex. Now, as you can see here, the fibers are taking origin from you know different parts of the precentral gyrus. Okay, the and uh, we have already seen the motor homunculus. So fibers uh, originating from or rather innervating, we can say, the head part they originate from the lateral cortex and then the fibers innervating the lower limbs we can say uh, originate from the medial cortex okay so the fibers they come like this so they descend into the so the fibers originating from the leg part you know are placed medially like this descend into the internal capsule fibers originate originating from the head part descend again into the internal capsule and are placed laterally. But in the internal capsule, you know, these fibers are twisted. 90 degree, there is a 90 degree rotation, okay, such that, you know, these lateral fibers are positioned anteriorly and these medial fibers are positioned posteriorly. Okay, clear? So, now, in the internal capsule, these fibers occupy the anterior two-third of the posterior limb of the internal capsule. The internal capsule is, you know, actually V-shaped uh, structure. Okay, uh, the V, the the, the bent uh, part of the V is uh, called as the genu of the internal capsule. Okay, so you'll find that uh, the internal capsule is actually uh, you know, is in between the caudate nucleus on the medial side and uh, lenticular nucleus on the lateral side. Okay, with the thalamus which is separating the, the you know the two, and so in between the thalamus you define the the limbs of the inter internal capsule in between the you know thalamus which is occupying the central portion, or in between the you know the, the limbs of the V-shaped uh, internal internal capsule. All right, and on the middle side, it will be bordered by the, so the border would be the caudate nucleus. On the lateral side, the border would be the lateral nucleus. So, in this uh, way, it is forming a kind of a, you know, V-shaped structure in between the thalamus and caudate nucleus. You have one limb, another, between thalamus and lateral nucleus, you have another limb of the V-shaped structure. Understand? So all these fibers would be occupying the anterior to third of the posterior limb of the internal capsule. Clear? The general part, which is the bent, you know, the bent of the V of the internal capsule, will be occupied by the corticobulbar uh, tracts, fibers from the of the uh, 
arising from the cortex itself, but then, you know, eventually forms cranial nerves. Okay, that uh, supplies the uh, head portion, the, you know, the face. Okay. And so this is, uh, you know, how, you know, these fibers are arranged in the internal capsule. Now, coming back to the corticospinal tract, okay, uh, you will find that um, they are twisted here. There is a 90 degree rotation resulting in the positioning of lateral fibers now are located in the anterior portion. Medial fibers are located on the posterior portion. Now they go on descending like this and they reach the midbrain and cerebral peduncles. Again, you know, they would be twisted again. You will find that, uh, you know, these fibers which are actually originating from here, the lateral side of the cortex coming towards the anterior now becomes medial. See, it becomes, you know, they are, they are, they are uh, positioned on the medial side. Whereas these fibers which uh, originate from the medial part of the cortex, twisted here and they go into the posterior, you know, become, uh, they become posterior to the to the end to the lateral fibers and then descend and then to become uh, you know to be placed on the lateral side in the cerebral peduncle in the midbrain okay so this is happening in midbrain so you find that uh, 90 degree turn occurs in the internal capsule another 90 degree turn occurs in the midbrain understand and then they descend like this through the pons they are arranged in bundles because uh, these fibers will have to, you know, they'll be separated by the pontine nuclei and they'll be separated in such a way that, the, you know, they form various, uh, you know, uh, bundles of corticospinal tract. Okay. And then they eventually reach the medulla. Here, this is the medulla where they reunite. Okay. Where they reunite and, um, eventually cross, some of them crossed, okay, now see few fibers are not crossing, but majority of the fibers are crossing here in the lower part of the medulla, all right, resulting in the formation of what we call an elevation in the, that looks like a pyramid, okay, so this is called as a decussation of the pyramids, okay, so it is because of this reason that the tracks are called as the pyramidal tracks. So the fibers, 80% of the fibers cross to the opposite side and descend you know, to terminate in the spinal cord. All right, they'll be actually ending on the anterior horn, on the lateral side. All right, the, if these, this 80% that crosses forms the lateral corticospinal tract. Okay, as you can see here, we form the lateral corticospinal tract and they terminate on the lateral side. All right, of the anterior horn actually. Okay, and then the synapse with, uh, you know, the motor neurons that are present in the anterior horn. It can be a direct uh, termination on the motor neurons or, you know, uh, termination on interneurons, okay, which will then finally connect the upper motor neuron to the lower motor neuron through the interneurons. Okay, clear. Now, the anterior, which is, you know, the 20% fibers that uh, have not crossed, they will be, you know, terminating in the medial side of the, so you can see this is the medial side of the anterior horn. Okay. So they will also terminate on the motor neurons present on the medial side of the anterior horn. Okay. Now, these may cross. When the, once the, you know, reaches the spine, some of these fibers may cross. Some may not cross, some may cross. We don't have the percentage of how many of these, you know, anterior corticospinal tracts cross when they, you know, terminate in the spinal cord. How many remain on the same site? But then uh, it is a fact that some of these fibers cross and some remains, uh, you know, on the same site and... Um, they join the, and it, I mean, they, you know, they become one, you know, as, uh, they form a single bundle with the uh, lateral corticospinal tract on that site, you know, on the same site. Okay. So they descend together with the lateral corticospinal tract on the same site. Fine. 
And uh, again, these, uh, as I've said, terminate on the modern neurons, and then from there, you'll have the, uh, you know, origination of the, from the anterior horn, the modern neurons from there will be the second, uh, the lower motor neuron that will be supplying the uh, effector or the muscles, all right? So, this is with regards to the corticospinal tract that becomes anterior, becomes lateral and anterior. The lateral corticospinal tract, all right, is uh, concerned with the fine skill movement complex, you know, uh, movements, fine skill complex movements, okay. And I'll come back to the function of these tracts. The anterior corticospinal tract, however, is, uh, you know, concerning with uh, uh, postural and posture and, you know, equilibrium, okay. So, uh, when we, when we, you know, we, when we look at the functions of these uh, two tracts, we can come to the conclusion that, you know, the uh, lateral corticospinal tract is actually supplying the or innervating the distal uh, muscle of the, you know, uh, the limbs, okay, the still, distal, distal muscle of the limbs, both upper as well as lower limbs. Now, you'll find that the anterior spinothalamic tract, because it concerns uh, posture adjustment and equilibrium of the body, so it, you know, it, uh, its function is basically, uh, I mean, its, uh, its innervation is basically muscles of the, you know, the proximal muscle of the limbs and the axial muscles, all right, in the trunk. Okay. The other track is called as the cortico bulbar or the cortico nuclear. As you can see here, uh, at the midbrain itself, you know, it uh, uh, diverts to form the motor nuclei, the cranial nerves, and uh, supplies, uh, you know, uh, muscles in the face, all right, in the jaw, in the neck, the jaw, face, okay. So, this uh, track is called as the cortico bulbar track, okay. The, you know, the, the, the pathway from the cortex to the midbrain and even to the medulla, upper part of the medulla, all right, is uh, similar to that of the cortico spinal track. Okay, everything is the same. I'll come back to the function of this particular track right, later. So I think now itself we can discuss the function. Function of the corto cortico bulbar tract is swallowing, kind of pronation because it supplies the tongue, it's, you know, it innervates the larynx, the tongue, the larynx, the face. So it, these are all functions of cortico bulbar tract. Swallowing, Phonation, that means uh, production of sound when speaking, movements of tongue, important for, you know, uh, for articulation, that means speaking, as well as uh, helps in the process of, uh, you know, swallowing, okay, and uh, chewing of the food, okay. I mean, it. Uh, it is the teeth that chews the food, but then the tongue that, you know, rolls of food in the mouth. And facial expressions is also part of the function of the cortico bulbar tracts. So what about the function of the uh, uh, other pyramidal tracts, the corticospinal tract? As I've said earlier, lateral corticospinal tracts control voluntary movements, fine precise movements, complex movements of, the, you know, the fingers, hands to carry skin. Well, anterior corticospinal tracts control muscles of trunk and proximal portion of the limbs to carry postural adjustment and gross movement. Okay. So in this case, the lateral corticospinal tract, you'll find that um, some uh, function with regards to segmental, uh, you know, reflexes is also being carried by the lateral corticospinal tracts. But then basically, you know, you should remember that uh, lateral corticospinal tract is concerned with uh, fine movements, fine skill movements. Anterior corticospinal tracts is concerned with posture, 
and equilibrium we can say okay easy for you to remember so these are again the same thing functions of uh, both the tracks so they are complementary to each other functions okay because you cannot perform all these rapid skill boundary fine movements which are you know we can say phasic in nature all right without you know assuming the correct posture okay and uh, posture is probably a tonic function okay so because uh, to assume a posture you may require some form of sustain you know contraction here the movements uh, are res are results of you know transient type of contractions okay so that's why you can, you get all these rapid skill one to five movements something uh, you know related to knitting writing uh, related to you know using of uh, you know fingers for uh, different fine skill uh, you know activities okay am i clear sir so what is uh, the summary summary is that motor tracks basically consists of two broadly all right broad division is uh, two types pyramidal and extra pyramidal pyramidal um, originate from the precentral gyrus itself extra pyramidal originate from the brain stem we say the subcortical structures isn't it and then we are discussing the uh, you know the pyramidal tracks uh, function is uh, both uh, fine skill rapid fine skill movements but uh, they are also you know uh, uh, they are also concerned with uh, you know adjustment of posture all right as you have already seen but then the extra pram track are mainly you know tracks concerning postural adjustment and equilibrium of the body okay and um, now we had focused on the pyramidal tract and you see that uh, the originate from the precentral gyrus descend into the uh, internal capsule and there is a turn 90 degree turn and then descend into the middle uh, in the mid, in the, into the midbrain again there's another 90, 90 degree turn and finally descends into the medulla to form the pyramid the, uh, all because the because uh, you know uh, pyramidal decussation okay and then from there they descend into the spinal cord and the, you know at the at the medulla you will find that uh, you know while forming the pyramid the corticospinal tract divides into two 80% of the fibers you know crosses the opposite side to form the pyramid and then uh, 20% do not cross continue on the same side all right and uh, they all and the you know the fibers that cross are called as the lateral corticospinal tract the fibers that do not cross are called as the anterior corticospinal tract okay the lateral corticospinal tract ends on the the end uh, the end on the lateral side of the anterior horn all right on the motor neuron cells or the interneuron cells all right and the anterior spinal thalamic tract the end on the medial side of the anterior horn again terminating on the motor neurons there okay to finally form the final common pathway which is the second order neuron okay now there is uh, something to the, the when 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 we look at the termination of these fibers in the spinal cord uh the you'll find that some of the fibers you know arising from the posterior parietal cortex they do not term, they do not you know end on the anterior horn cells they end on uh, sorry they do not they do not end on the anterior horn all right of the spinal cord they end on the posterior horn of the spinal cord okay so as you know that posterior horn is uh, basically consisting of uh, cells concerning with sens uh, with sensory sensation okay okay so therefore we say that these fibers are you know, have a different function and that function is basically something to do with the sensory motor you know uh, 
interaction or some time some kind of uh, you know carrying some kind of sensory motor function uh, information okay so that is the only you know um, twist there uh, with regards to the corticospinal tract okay otherwise they are all end in the anterior horn okay am i clear yes sir am i clear so yes, sir. eventually the second motor neuron i mean the second uh, sorry the low motor neuron ends in the respective muscles okay clear so if it's anterior left corticospinal tract they would be ending on the axial muscles the proximal muscles all right of the limbs rather the muscles in the proximal part of the limbs and the axial muscles are present in the trunk in the you know abdomen you know and uh, waist and all that but uh, the they are all concerned with the, you know postural adjustment but then when you look at the lateral corticospinal tract they will be terminating on muscle concerning with you know fine skill movement okay clear so the distal part of the they will be they will be innervating the distal, distal part of the limbs okay the distal muscles of the limbs is it clear am i clear about pyramidal tract yes sir keep that in mind that today we had discussed pyramidal tracts though i had uh, the earlier part of the lecture i had said something about extra pyramidal tracts but i have not i have not discussed i have not uh, you know to focus this class on both the tracts i have only focus on the pathway of the pyramidal tracts for the next class we will be looking at the you know pathways of the different uh, extra pyramidal tracts okay okay sir all right you you know you you have listened to this lecture you go back read all right take your book a textbook and then uh, just go through you know as uh, long as it's still fresh in your mind and uh, probably you do a reading now it will stay there it will be registered in your brain clear goodbye okay sir all right bye bye sir thank you sir